Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kimmler. Our next guest is currently in the process of walking every street in New York City, from the Bronx to Brooklyn to Staten Island and everything in between. The new documentary, The World Before Your Feet, produced by Jesse Eisenberg and directed by Jeremy Workman, doesn't just chart Matt Green's progress as he travels through the city. It beautifully shows the diversity, the unity, and the spirit of this great city. Let's take a look. For me, there's a big difference between reading about a place in a book and being there in person. What it feels to stand in front of it, to touch it, to discover something about it. All of a sudden, it comes alive to me. How you doing? Oh, hi. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this big walking project, walking every block of the five boroughs. So it's like a mission? Yeah, it's a mission. Aren't you tired? I'm a little tired. The people in the world who captivate me the most are people who do something just because they want to do it. Maybe the other people think it's stupid. It's helped me find more satisfaction in the basic stuff of life. I don't have an apartment. Cat sitting is one way that I find places to stay. <laughs> I started doing a ton of research. This house, this building, this fence. He found the thing, he got curious about it. He'd stay up all night reading newspapers from the 1800s. I sometimes questioned whether it was healthy, all that isolation that he would do with his wall. I thought it was gonna take maybe, you know, two to two and a half years, but that was almost five years ago now. <laughs> Why do you like to walk? I feel like it's just the perfect way to kind of explore the world. Good to meet you all. Matt, 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 Matt. See where this ends up taking me? Person, you become much more interested in them. I mean, come in. I think it's the same thing with, you know, a city. Whoa. It's an actual place where you stood and you felt something there. You know what used to be right over here? Get beat up? Never got beat up, never got mugged. Unless you're about to mug me. Everybody, please welcome director Jeremy Workman, producer Jesse Eisenberg, and the walker himself, Matt Green. The walker? Is that like what we should call it? How do we? Sir Pedestrian would be. Oh, Sir yeah, Pedestrian. Yeah. You've, been, you've been knighted as the pedestrian. Yeah, I have, yeah. It was nice yeah. meeting the queen. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Uh, so you are not done yet, right? Yeah, I'm still still walking. Still Somehow, walking. There's still a few hundred miles left. It's probably, I'm probably 95% done. 95% yeah. done. And now... Does that make you sad in a way? Because so much of this documentary, what you say and what you talk about is how it's not about finishing and it's been about the process. So as you inch closer and closer to finishing, how does that feel? It, it feels a little weird. I mean, it's also exciting to be approaching the end of this massive thing I've been trying to do for years and years. Um, but, you know, I, I, whatever I do next, I have no idea what it'll be, but it'll probably be a continuation of this in some way. So it doesn't really feel like that another much city. end, you know? I don't know if literally <laughs> another city, but something related to walking, exploring, learning. Um, so it doesn't feel like that much of an end to me. So it's been, you've been doing this for six years, right? And yeah, almost, almost seven now. Almost seven now. Yeah. Jeremy, when did you meet Matt? How did you meet Matt? And when did you decide to start filming? I known Matt for about a decade and he had been doing these crazy walks and I had sort of been thinking like, oh wow, these are really interesting. He, um, he walked across the country before he walked all of New York City. And um, so we were friends, and I had always wanted to sort of bring a camera out and following him because what he was sort of seeing out just by doing this really simple thing was really interesting, and all these sort of themes emerged and just a really unique view of the world. Um, so I started filming him about three, over three years ago. I filmed him for three years and filmed about 500 some odd hours. How do you know as a documentarian what scenes to film with him? Because oftentimes, even with a documentary, you know, you have a subject and that subject says, I'm going to court today. And you go, okay, that's a scene and I'm gonna go film that scene. He says, I'm gonna go walk like I did yesterday. 
and if something might happen, something I might just walk alone for eight hours. That's why I filmed 500 hours. You know, there was a lot of there was a lot of 498 of the and a half of those where maybe it, it wasn't worth putting in the movie. But you know, what was really interesting was just sort of being out with him and being out in all these different parts of New York City that you know aren't often in the media. I mean, we all see, you know, parts of New York and, you know, we know Times Square and where the ball drops and even sort of behind us. But there's all these sort of, New York's so big and Matt sort of explores it in a way that, like I said, it's really simple, but um, you just see see the world in a very unique way. So would you say that part of your process in documenting him wasn't just about making sure that you were getting the story for the film, but actually in some ways experiencing this, uh, the same thing that he was? Very much so. I mean, uh, the goal, I think, for me as a filmmaker was to try to let the audience experience what it was like to walk with Matt. And, you know, Matt, um, he see even, you know, he sees these sort of very simple things. He's very observant. He's very curious. And he sort of notices things and he does a lot of research on them and when you walk with them you start sort of noticing those things too and you start realizing like wow there's this sort of infinite kind of a simple but amazing stuff sort of right in front of our eyes and um, that was something that I, I kind of wanted the movie to show and not it doesn't have to be something you know incredible or you know wow but it just sort of makes you think and sort of realize what's in front of you well yeah it's quite wonderful how quickly the movie does begin to show that and become about that versus becoming just about like this is a cool thing that this guy did it becomes about the all of the little minute details that he experienced jesse when did you get on board with the movie how did you hear about it when um yeah maybe a two years ago or something, or maybe a year and a half ago, Jeremy emailed me out of the blue saying, um, you know, he's editing this thing. He was looking for some kind of, like, creative input from somebody who has, uh, you know, a different perspective but is still in the arts and, you know, in the same world. And um, I have never done anything like this. When I read his email, I thought, this is not anything I'm interested in doing, so let me watch five minutes of his thing and write something nice back and, you know, say congratulations and good luck. I mean, that in and of itself is a really nice thing for a person to do. I'm, like... I'm, I'm really nice. And so... Um, <laughs> Truth be told, I did know Jesse a okay, little yeah. bit before. Yeah, yeah, right. We 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 had we had met briefly, um, and then I watched like five minutes of the movie, which turned into ten minutes, which turned into the whole thing, and I watched it a second time that day. I thought it was just incredible. I thought it was incredible the first time I watched it because I thought I related to Matt. You know, we kind of look alike. We have the same world perspective, similar education. But then I started showing it to uh, like my wife and my friends uh, and my parents, and everybody kind of related to it in their own way and kind of thought that it had like this. I don't know, very personal resonance for them. My parents looked at Matt as this kind of like Jack Kerouac figure, you know, somebody from their generation who, you know, is like a kind of a forgotten kind of person who just wanders around the world like, you know, uh, what we, what my generation would consider aimless, you know. Uh, my friend who teaches in Brownsville, who teaches like at a public school in Brownsville for kids who are like kind of at a last chance high school, said, you know, what Matt's doing is what I've been doing for the last 20 years, going into neighborhoods that people like us don't normally go into and integrating into the city and say, and, and, and seeing what a metropolis really has to offer. Um, my wife thought of Matt as like a social justice warrior. You know, he's pointing out, I mean, he's not that, but you know, he's, he's pointing out, you know, where like the first birth control clinic was and he's interested in like the stories that of people that have been forgotten. Um, and so uh, I think everybody kind of looks at Matt as their kind of like blank slate that they can kind of impose their own, I don't know, their own New York experiences on. Yeah, it's a sense of tour guide, but then also a bit of a wish fulfillment as well in watching you, where I think a lot of people watching go, I wish that I could do that as well. I wish that I could leave behind the day-to-day -day grind of trying to get by and move forward faster and just take in the world around me and its rich history and, and, and the beauty. Take me back to the moment where you decided to do that. You know, I mean, I, what I do remember is that I, I used to work as an engineer, and I was sitting at my desk one day, and I had been doing a lot of walks around New York. Um, long walks, I'd started a walking group um, where like random people would meet up with me and we'd walk 20 miles on a Saturday or something just through. So backtrack just, but when yeah. did you realize that you liked to walk so much? Uh, my parents are big walkers. Silly of a question is that's yeah. My parents are big walkers. <laughs> I mean, I definitely remember, <laughs> I, I, <could. laughs> I remember hating it as a kid, being dragged out. Like, no one wants to do something their parents want, want them to do, but yet you're still influenced by your parents in that way. So, so when I became, you know, an autonomous adult-like person, I could go out and, you know, walk around and, and start to realize on my own terms all the things that I was learning about the world. Um, so I came to New York. There's this giant subway map you see 
you know, when you get on the subway, I started wondering, like, what, I wonder what it looks like up in this corner of the map, or this corner, or this corner, and, you know, it just made me want to take the, take the trains out and walk around those neighborhoods, and then that just evolved and evolved and became, you know, I want to go to all these places I haven't been, just see what it looks like on foot compared to what I see in a map. And so anyway, I'd been doing a lot of that, and I was sitting at my desk all the time in my engineering job, and I just wasn't, you know, wasn't really fulfilled there. And uh, I don't know, I just had this idea of, of stringing together all these long walks in one line and seeing how far I could get, you know? So I remember uh, getting on the internet and looking up, like, can you walk across America? Is that something you can do? I found this guy, Gary House, who'd done it a couple times, and I think that was the seed. You know, as soon as I realized someone had done it and it could be done, that, that it was going to happen. Um, so then you did a walk across America at that point. I did. And then, uh, and then I came back, and I had no idea what I was going to do after that. I just worked some odd jobs for about a year and a half. And um, I had heard of a couple people who had walked every street in Manhattan. And I started thinking, like, you know, that, that was such an unusual idea for me, such a, like, thorough way to see a place, the exact opposite of, of going somewhere on vacation and checking off a couple highlights, this idea of just seeing every part of it. And that was really appealing to me. And then the idea of just expanding that from Manhattan to all five boroughs. Just again, it was a question of like, could I physically do it? Is there, is, is there enough time to do it? You know, how long will it take me? And I eventually decided that if I just don't have an apartment and I don't have to have money to pay rent, that I could stretch out my savings enough to, to make it happen. There's a moment in the documentary where you're walking through, I think it's the East Village, and you say to a person that's walking with you, uh, oh, this is my favorite part of the street, and I really love this. And I was thinking in my head, why is he walking the street again? He has more streets to walk. He's not done yet. But how often do you find that you're okay with taking a day away from walking new streets and sure. just rewalking some of your favorites? Yeah, I mean, also just, you know, just in the process of walking every block, you have to walk a lot of them more than once. Just mathematically, that happens. But yeah, there's plenty of times, you know, say I have to take the subway somewhere to walk in this area, so I have to rewalk a lot of distance from the subway station to where the new blocks are. But, you know, the way I look at it is that in, in a way, I have this big goal and it's not accomplishing that, you know, it's not taking me closer to accomplishing that, so I get annoyed. But then it's like, you know, I, I should like walking if I'm doing this for, for years and years, so I better make sure that I don't get annoyed when I have to walk. Do you currently have a favorite street or neighborhood? Yes. Oh. The next street that I'm going to walk. Oh, uh, very, very, you know, there very you forward go. looking. Uh, Jeremy, what was the toughest part about making this documentary? Uh, the toughest part was that it's not like, a we've all seen a lot of documentaries that kind of have, you know, the finish line or they're about the, the contest or there's like some ticking clock. And this really wasn't that because as you heard, Matt's still walking. So I sort of knew right when I started filming very, at the very beginning that this was going to be the kind of movie where probably the end of the movie is him still walking. Um, so it became this challenge to how do you- So much better. But also sure. so much harder. So to much walk. harder because how do you make that into a movie that people sit and watch a movie for 90 minutes and that has a sort of a structure like you would sort of see any movie, you know? So that became a big challenge for me is how do you edit this? How do you turn this into this experience where the movie felt like you were having this, you were, you know, kind of experiencing the walk with Matt, but it still felt like it followed a, a story structure. And, um, you know, I'm an editor by, by trade. It's how I got into the industry. I, I was an editor, still am. It's so, I, I was, I really thought about it in terms of that. Like, how do you edit so much footage into a story? And um, I- How did you find that? How did you end up sort of setting up, I imagine you, set up different pieces of the of the story here and then edit those scenes or those Yeah, sequences. a little bit. I mean, the movie, you know, as you saw, and even as you see in the trailer, it's very thematic. It's about all these sort of themes that happen when when um, when you go out with Matt. You know, sometimes it's just about seeing these sort of interesting things in front of you. Sometimes it's historical. Sometimes it's about the city of New York. Sometimes it's about the quirky quest of this sort of eccentric guy who lives off $10, $15 a day. So there was all these sort of themes that sort of, you know, presented themselves. So it was my job to sort of take those themes and sort of make it about, have the movie follow them in a way. I'm gonna ask a really bougie mm -hmm. question. Do you ever get sick of living off of 10 or $15 a day? I, I don't, it does, like, I think some, some people see this as like, oh, I've sacrificed this to be able to do this, but I don't feel like it's a sacrifice at all. It's just what I wanted to do. So it's, it's really the opposite of sacrifice. It's kind of in a way my ideal life, I think. Yeah, you know, Jesse, I had a, I was, as I was watching the movie and he's walking through the city and meeting all these random people and your name is on it as a producer, I'm thinking like, 
if for you as a person who's been in massive big budget Hollywood movies and your face has been on billboards and, or something, was there a sense of wish fulfillment of watching it as well and be like, I wish I could kind of walk around like that as well? More so like the kind of, um, more, more so like the doing for its own sake rather than the kind of anonymity or whatever. Because it felt to me like, um, I guess, because I'm in a part of the industry where the goals are so specific, um, just based on the economy of it, uh, it feels like um, so mystifying to me that somebody would do the thing he's doing. But I think it's probably not unique to me or my industry. It's you, it's probably just everybody in the world, um, you know. And it, and so what was kind of I would say like humbling uh, or enviable was like um, his ability to focus on something so myopically that has no kind of clear capitalization, you know, possibility, and. Uh, now that I know him, it's funny because you know when you meet somebody who's so similar to you, every tiny difference feels incredibly confusing. And so Matt and I are so similar in every way, probably genetically as well. And yet uh, this this difference is that I have to like feel like I can accomplish something at the end of the day that I can tell my accountant about, and uh, and and he doesn't. Yeah, that was the feeling that I had while watching the film as well. It's like the, the wish fulfillment of like, oh, I would love to be able to finish a day and be like, I just ex enjoyed a day. I just embraced the day itself. Yeah, and also, you know, what's interesting about Matt is like, I think one of the really appealing things about this movie is he seems like the last person on earth who would want a documentary uh, filmmaker following him. And I think that's partly his appeal to, I mean, that's obnoxious to call, I mean, you know, he's not marketing himself or anything, but part of what's so lovely about him when you watch it is that he seems totally uninterested in ingratiating himself to a, a mass audience. And and so you're kind of, you're rooting for him. He seems that much more personable. And uh, yeah, that's another quality I don't there's have. Really, and there's not like an, a, re a reluctance to being filmed or anything or being on camera. There's just a casualness about it where I don't think you ever show us a, a block or, or a mural or anything and you're like, hello, I am Matt and I am walking. And you're like very just kind of like, that's a thing I saw if you like it, okay. Right. And then you keep walking. What was it like when Jeremy started digging into to your family and talking to your family and trying to find, I think, uh, in some ways, psychological reasons for why you would undertake this? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, a, a couple people had come to me before Jeremy started filming with the idea of filming something, and it just felt too weird and intrusive. And with Jeremy having known him for so long. I'm sorry, I don't mean yeah. to laugh. I just love the idea that you're doing this massive thing, and people are coming to you and being like, I want to make a movie about you. And you're like, no, I just want to. <laughs> Do it by, like that's just such a rarity. Everybody wants a movie made about them, and they're doing nothing. <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't know. It just, but it was such a like to me, it was such a personal thing I was doing, even though I, it was something out there in public that people could follow the blog or whatever. Like it was just so incredibly personal to me that I felt weird having someone else kind of put their own spin on it and turn it into some movie. But, but with Jeremy, just having known him for so long and having seen his other movies where. He often is taking some eccentric character and, and show, you know, showing something that they're not capable of expressing themselves, but that's very important about what they're doing. Um, I, I was kind of excited, in fact, to see just to see his take on it and to, to have it transformed from like this long, endless, linear string of steps that I'm taking into this thing that looks back and reflects on previous times and, and looks at different themes and brings in family members and stuff. And so by the time you know, he had been filming with me for, I don't know, a year or two, and then he's like, oh, you know, I want to talk to your parents, ex-girlfriends. You know, I had enough trust in him at that point that, that I was just okay with it. Because I felt like whatever he's going to do with it, I don't know what he wants to do with it. But, but I think it's going to be good. Like, I, I, think that, I think that he knows what he's doing and that he's, you know, thinks of things in the same way as me and has the same. Um, he, got, he got the themes of, of why I was walking and... Were you aware of those themes before he got them as well? Like in terms of your bike accident or what happened with your brother yeah. and this idea that, you know, we only live for so long, you might as well enjoy it. Were you already kind of a aware of that? Not really. Yeah. You know, it was really interesting to hear my, my parents and my brother talk about those things and kind of put into context this, you know, I st I st it's not like that happened and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, Carpe diem, must go out and seize the day. But So often our family you, members have an, a, a better analysis exactly. of us than, yeah. than we have of ourselves. And, and I think it rings true on a more subconscious level that, that those things affected me. Right. Yeah. So, so you'd walk like 3,000 miles and you heard that and you're like, oh, that's why I'm that's doing it. That's why I did okay, it. Okay, right. yeah. Thanks, All Mom. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah.
It's like free, you know, free therapy. Jeremy, what was it like when you decided to, to, to interview his family and his brother and the ex-girlfriends as well? Yeah, it was tricky. I had to sort of first get, you know, I, I wanted to get Matt's permission to go to his ex-girlfriends. It was personal. And, and you know, the movie is about him going in New York City. So it, it also, you have to sort of wrap your head and say like, okay, but we're going to also talk about his personal life. Um, but since it was this story also of this eccentric quest, I thought it was very relevant. Um, you know, I thought it was, everybody, you know, had, had really interesting things to say about Matt, and it sort of helped color in a story, um, not just about his motivations, I don't know if we ever hear that, I don't know if we ever know that, but just in terms of understanding why this made such sense to him and has made such sense to him to do it. Um, so it was, it was great. There was actually one ex-girlfriend who, <laughs> who, re who refused to go on camera. I, so it wasn't just, there was others that I tried to get. <laughs> Why'd you tell us that? <laughs> he, just, he just likes to make any joke about that scene that he can. Trying to make me blush in front of There was only one ex-girlfriend in the actually, movie. <laughs> my, the point being that there was actually other ex-girlfriends that uh, were not in the movie. Uh, you said you have 95 miles left, or 90... I'm 95% done. 95% done, yeah, done, excuse so, me, so, so a few, few hundred, hundred miles. miles left. Yeah. Do you know where approximately those hundred, a few hundred miles are? They're actually scattered all about the city, because since I, I stay in different people's apartments, you know, watch people's cats and all that kind of stuff, I'm staying all over the city, so I just walk wherever's most convenient to where I'm staying. So as a result, I still have unwalked areas scattered around the city. And you could figure out what they, I, uh, it's on his website. Yeah, I mean, you can look at my progress map. And, yeah, on his yeah. website, I'm just walking.com, walking.com. What is it? I'm just walking.com. It's I'm just walking.com, but I, I got the option with the G and have it forward to the right, right nice. one. So, so it's either one. I don't one. have to enunciate that. That's great. Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> okay, got it. And anyway, you could see his map and his progress. And it's, it's actually really interesting because some of the areas that he hasn't yet walked are areas that are the most well tread in New York City, like Central Park area, it's just south of Central, Midtown Manhattan, like the thing you would think he would do first, or the thing you'd think he'd check off because he already done it, but uh, it's random streets here and there, it's not any kind of big block. Yeah, you're reminded like how big New York City is. I mean, you know, I, I know I sort of mentioned this before, but you know, New York, we, we, we sort of think of New York in one way, but it's so big. I mean, when you get to the outer boroughs, Queens and Brooklyn, Staten Island, it's the mileage is just, the square mileage is so big. Um, and it's also, it's the most populated city, we all know that, but it's the most populated city in the United States by far. It's not even really close. So it's um, a really just a, a, a u incredibly unique metropolis that's unlike any other city in the United States. You know, one of the great feelings that I had while watching the documentary was how the unifying feeling of you meeting all of these people on the street and everyone being generally pretty sweet to you and, and interested. Um, and I'm wondering if that was something that you felt while you were making the film too. And you knew at a certain point, like this is what I have to capture and this is what I make sure people I, take away from this film. Yeah, I just saw it. I would be out with Matt in any any neighborhood, any any type of kind of people, any demographic, any age, any ethnicity, and they would instantly sort of be interested in Matt, and Matt would talk to them, and they would suddenly sort of become his best friend. You know, he's like a human greeting card, and it really, when, when I saw that um, in person, I, I knew that that was going to be a big aspect of the movie. You know, um, it's almost like you know, it's almost like New York City is a small town, and Matt's like the local mayor, you know, of the small town. But it happens to be this crazy city that is just insane. You know, there's an aspect of it that feels a bit like therapy for right now, and I'm wondering if you had that as well. You've been walking for six years, and in the last couple of years, the um, the rhetoric is toxic and you know people are split and we're always hearing how polarized everybody is but in the midst of hearing this you've been walking around and saying hi to everybody in in the city yeah it's a really good reminder that you know if you don't take the time to get out to be around people who aren't like you what you're going to focus on is what you hear about them in the news right and so all we hear about in the news is, is political division. And so you're going to focus on the political differences you have with different groups as if that's the only feature of them. But when you go out and meet people from the different groups, no one talks about politics. Politics is such a small part of our life, you know. There's so many bigger things in our daily life that are important to us, but they just don't make the news. So we, when we're not out meeting people, we have this idea that they're, they're the exact opposite of us and we're, we're at war. And you know, all, the most important thing in our lives is these political issues. And then you go out and say hi to people, and they talk about trying to fix their fence that fell over because of the lightning storm the other day or something. You know, this, you're just reminded that there's so much more involved in people's lives that 
that is pretty much similar and relatable with all of us, but it just just doesn't get reported. So you have to go meet people to talk about it. But you have to ask why they built that fence. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You got to get get back in the history of that fence. You know. Uh, let's get a couple questions from the audience. Who's a question? Oh. Wait, hi. that's a wall joke. Got it. Uh, hi, oh. I have a question. Is this on? Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Picking up on something. Go ahead. Do you have a? Uh, I have a question for Matt and then Jesse. Uh, Matt, I'd like to commend you on uh, you giving up your apartment and your job and your possessions. And um, I'm from Staten Island, and I want to know if you came into contact with the with the deer, which are everywhere, and the turkeys that cross the street by the zoo, and uh, the Canadian geese by the College of Staten Island. And Jesse's question, I just want to say I'm a big fan, and um, what magnetizes me about you, you is your uh, intensity, the way you deliver your lines, and I'm wondering, are you equally as compelling in daily life? <laughs> More so. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, to answer your first question, um, yes, yeah, Staten Island, I think probably the most surprising place for most people in New York to walk because it's so little portrayed in, in the national media and people just, you know, have some assumption about it, but there's, you know, a very diverse place. And yeah, the, the wildlife there is incredible. Um, I've seen, yeah, so many deer. I've heard that in the last decade, the deer population went from like two dozen to a thousand. Um, and yeah, there's there's wild turkeys all over the place. I've seen, uh, I've seen seals on the beach in Staten Island. I've seen bald eagles. Uh, we've seen peacocks. Yeah, you know. a, lot, a lot of them are in the movie too. Yeah, in Staten yeah. There's at least yeah, little of shots life. of a lot of Staten Island wildlife in the movie. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's and the terrain of Staten Island so hilly and everything. It's a great surprise to a lot of people, I think. It was definitely to me too. Just it was amazing terrain. Uh, next question. Hi, I have an online question from Taylor, and they want to know um, for Matt, what is the most underrated spot that you found so far? Man, I, I okay. Here's gonna be my answer because I can't, you know, I can't pick and choose one. But I think the most underrated spot is is the spot you're in right now. That you, what you're thinking is where should I go? Where like where's somewhere exciting I can go? Because this place where I am is boring. And I think wherever you are right now is is underrated because you haven't paid a bit of attention to it while you've been, you know, on your phone trying to look at Yelp and figure out what cool thing to go to. One more. Hi. Um, I was just wondering what the most important thing that you've learned, not only walking, but having it captured on film was. That's a great question. Um, I think that, you know, uh, there have been a, a lot of big themes for me that have come out of the walk, like like what I was talking about, about how, you know, I don't think we're nearly as divided as, as we think that we are. And likewise, th this idea that, um, that there's so much to be seen right around us that we just don't pay attention to. And, and you know, we're, we're trying to think about where to go on vacation and all that kind of stuff. And, and there's a lot around us. And, uh, but you know, it, it, what was interesting is, is with the film coming out and seeing how Jeremy captured those ideas. And it's, I'm not, I'm not in the film like telling you this explicitly. He just managed to get these ideas across in this very subtle way. And it really crystallized in my mind how important those things are, that, that he was able to see them and made them the thrust of the movie without me ever talking about them directly. Um, guys, congratulations on the film. It's beautiful, a uh, wonderful job, and uh, I look forward to hearing about it when uh, when you finish. Thank you. And I, I look forward to hearing what your, next, what your next journey is. Yeah, I, like, I look forward to knowing that as well. Uh, <laughs> the World Before Your Feet uh, opens today. In it opens New York. tomorrow in New York City, <laughs> at uh, at a great theater close to here, the Quad Cinema. It opens in Los Angeles at the New Art on Friday, and then it'll be expanding to additional cities after that. So. Everybody should look out for it, go on our website, and there'll be information about how to see it. And it's absolutely wonderful, a really beautiful job. Go see it in the theater uh, if you can, and give these guys a big round of applause. Let's hear it. Thank you.